there is the grid forming up for race two, round 12 of the 2015 TCR International Series. What, I wonder, will happen in this race? And as I mentioned earlier, Igor Shkuz, 39 years of age yesterday, on pole position after qualifying in 10th place. Now, can he give the West Coast Racing Team its second win of the afternoon? He said to us last night that he was extremely nervous about starting from pole. Air temperatures and track temperatures climbing ever so slightly compared to race one but uh, still not anything like the kind of temperatures or humidity we saw at the beginning of the season with the two races in Kuala Lumpur, at, at Sepang and at Shanghai in China. Michel Nukia then, whatever the problem was with the car in race one, he's out of the pits and uh, on the front row of the grid alongside Igor Shkuz. Michel Nukia, of course, also another race winner this year. So can he claim his second win of the season? That's the repair that you saw being carried out to Mikhail Grachev's car. Franz Engstler himself getting involved in the, wow, mostly duct tape, it seems, forming the front end of that Sayat Leon. Grachev will start from third position on the grid a Russian behind a Ukrainian Andrea Beliki will start from fourth place on the grid so after a podium finish in race one you'd have to say that Beliki will be looking to go one or two places better in race two Shkuz then from Nukia from Grachev from Beliki the first two rows of the grid Sergei Avanasiev starts alongside his Kraft Bamboo Luke Oil teammate Jordi Genet with the third red and white Seat of Pepe Oriola just behind. Stefano Camini on the fourth row of the grid alongside Oriola and there are Morbidelli and Gleason. Fifth row of the grid, the top ten reversed of course. Lorenzo Velia and Bas Scouten, row six. And the back row of the grid, Marcus Oestreich in the Astra and Zolt Jarbo. We think if the car has been repaired, we'll see as they go round and indeed a bonnet up there. And the bonnet is up on the Astra. No Zolt Jarbo, it didn't look like. And so potentially we're down to 13 or even 12 cars for this second race. That great four way shot we've seen before, but. I never get tired of seeing it, of the drivers' faces as they take the green flag lap, the warm-up lap, where they all use the chance to get some temperature into their tyres. Tyre warmers not being allowed. There is the heavily patched up Mikhail Grachev's car as uh, Sergei Avanasiev, and indeed no confirmation that Zolt Jarbo still in the pit lane. You can see there the damage to his car and uh, he will be playing no further part in proceedings this afternoon. But what of that Opel Astra? Can the Campos Racing Team get Marcus Oestreich out for race two? As Igor Schkuz leads the field around this 4.241 kilometer circuit, Oestreich in the pits. And uh, the, the team looking, but uh, yep, engine up again, oh, bonnet up again. And the team will be bitterly disappointed at that because they had all the problems with Fernando Monge's car after its engine change earlier in the weekend. The new engine, they were saying, uh, completely different to the old one and all the mapping settings didn't seem to be working. But they said that uh, Ustreich's car uh, was behaving just like Monge's in Monza one week ago. So um, you kind of wonder what's going on with the engine, if indeed it is that, in Oestreich's car.
So this time Gianni Morbidelli will be starting from ninth on the grid. And uh, Comini will be starting from eighth, but on the other side of the track. But they will be going down to the first chicane together. Igor Shguz's family watching from the West Coast Racing Garage. Keeping their fingers crossed that Igor makes a good start. But you have to say, Michel Nukia, who has his own personal reasons to enjoy racing at the Salzburg Ring, won the first European Touring Car Cup here back in the mid-2000s as the West Coast Racing team gather to watch the start on the televisions in the pit garage. Scoos comes very gently round through that uh, sequence called the chicane, which gets uh, the cars back onto the start-finish straight. He will line up in pole position. The board's held out to signify the positions on the grid for the drivers. Still a beautiful day in Austria. Rain here on Thursday, dry on Friday for the test session. Yesterday cloudy, but at least it stayed dry. And uh, today, just high cloud and uh, no sign of rain, but also no particularly high temperatures, which is what the drivers were worried about because of uh, tire degradation. Marcus Oestreich heads off through the pit lane as the cars form up. We're waiting for the green flag from the back of the grid. There it is. We look at the lights and it's the bottom row of lights. Red lights on and off. We're away. Igor Shkuz starts well, I think. The drag down to the first chicane has Michel Nukia just got his nose in front. And uh, Shkuz, you have to say, has been sidelined out on the left-hand side of the track. Nukia already starting to come away. And uh, Shkuz just being nudged by Grachev, who also does pretty much the same as he did the first, la first race. And he takes to the escape road, as does Shkuz. As Michel Nukia leads a... Target competition, one, two, three. Nuki ahead of Baliki, ahead of Kamini, who's made his way up from, third, from eighth place on the grid to be in third as they go through the right-hander at the Nockstein. And I wonder if words will be said between Shkuz and uh, Grachev at the end of the race. There is Shkuz as we look down the hill to the Three target competition cars with the two Kraft Bamboo Luke Oil cars just turned. Oh, that was, uh, I think, Janae just taking to the grass and getting it sideways. Indeed not, it was uh, Oriola with uh, Janae up behind the target competition car of Kamini. They come through the chicane for the first time. Looking ahead from Oriola's car. Oh, and Nukia very wide on that uh, left-hander onto the start-finish straight, but hangs on. Nukia from Beliki, just two-tenths of a second. Kamini back in third. Then Janae, then Oriola. Oh, just locking up under brakes, Michel Nukia, but they're all safe three through the chicane at turns one and two. Oestreich a long way back in 14th place, but... Uh, Again, his, uh, his battle will be to get through the field, and maybe get into the top ten and score another point. At least the team managed to get him out. As we look at the tail of the field. Gleason, our race one winner, down in 12th. As we look down the hill, Grachev has recovered to sixth. Then Valia, Morbidelli, Avanasiev there. Valia passing Morbidelli and going off in pursuit of the two Kraft Bamboo Luke Oil cars. Nukia, Beliki, Kamini. And Janae, Oriola, Valia, 
uh, Grachev, excuse me, then Valia, then Morbidelli, then Avanasiev. Skuz now in 10th place. There he is in the background, and that is, uh, that is in fact, Skuz and, uh, and Baskauten. Gleason having got past that uh, incident and up into 10th place. We'll see if we has that, have that as a replay. Nukia then still holds on to his lead ahead of Andrea Beliki. Stefano Camini still third, Janay fourth. This is the incident involving, ah! Skuz seemingly turning across Baskauten. And that's coming into the chicane at uh, turn 11. That uh, left-hander I mentioned much uh, earlier in the day. So coming out of Faralaga curve, turning left into the complex known as the chicane. That's where that incident happened. And that, I suspect, is going to spell the end of the race for Igor Skuz and Baskauten. Marcus Oestreich now up to 11th place. Gleason in 10th as we look ahead at Jordi Janais' car in fourth place. Kamini, Baliki and Nukia in third, second and first ahead of him. They come through the chicane. Line astern, no such issues. And they come back onto the start-finish straight for the start of lap four. As we take a look at the race start, an absolutely stunning start. And we look, this is the incident that uh, that saw Grachev force Skuz into the escape road. We're on board with Kamini, I would have said. And indeed, there go Grachev and Skuz. Nukia, Beliki, and Kamini. One, two, and three. Now, that seemed to be an awfully strong start from Stefano Camini and indeed if you look at the top of the screen a jump start by Stefano Camini under investigation by the stewards I don't know if we can see it again from another angle but uh, from this angle it certainly looked as uh, there is contact there this is Nukia out dragging Igor Shkuz down to the first corner Looking back at Beliki. And then Grachev and Shkuz taking to the escape road. So we'll see what the stewards have to say about that possible jump start by Stefano Camini. But at the end of lap four, it is still Nukia who leads from Andrea Beliki, Stefano Camini. Then it's the two Kraft Bamboo Lukol cars of Jordi Genet and Pepe Oriola. And Lorenzo Velia has got past Mikhail Grachev. Ooh, contact between the pair. Grachev just tapping Velia, but uh, no long lasting damage. Ah, that is Kamini who's pulled up. Kamini running slowly in the background. So, what on earth has happened to Stefano Kamini? Back up to speed quite quickly. So, was there contact while we were looking at the Scrap between the two Engstler cars as uh, Morbidelli goes up the outside of Lorenzo Veil of Mikhail Grachev going up the hill. Grachev, though, holding on, but there's smoke possibly from a tyre rubbing on the bodywork. But it's, uh, it's Morbidelli who's got the inside line, and uh, Avanasiev goes through as well. Through the Ostleifer, this is on board for with Kevin Gleason now in ninth place. That's Grachev ahead. Avanasiev, the and indeed the stewards have uh, decided to give Stefano Camini a drive-through penalty. So a drive-through for Stefano Camini. Plus there was that problem. There he is in the background. So the team will be telling him to take that penalty. Now, this is looking back. There is contact. And that's where Janae got past, but it didn't seem to be that strong a contact. And indeed, Stefano Camini immediately takes his drive through. 
So no repeat of the incident which saw Andrea Beliki fail to take his drive-through penalty earlier in the season. As we look at Kevin Gleeson, on board with Gleeson now looking at the back of Grachev's car. Has Grachev left just enough room? And indeed he has. Gleeson gets up the left-hand side, but of course it's a right-hander coming up. Has Gleeson done it? Grachev hanging on, though, for the right-hander, and indeed it would appear that the two side-by-side, side, Grachev holding on into the right-hander. Gleeson has to back off. So Grachev and Gleeson scrapping for eighth place. Kamini, of course, having dropped back. So Grachev it'll be, who's in eighth ahead of Gleeson. The timing screens will catch up as they go across the finish line. As the, the two are still lacked, uh, locked in uh, in combat. So Nukia then leads from Beliki still, but Beliki all over the back of his teammate's car now. Pepe Oriola from Jordi Janay. Oriola having passed Janay as we were looking at the various battles going on. Valia just ahead of Morbidelli. Avanasiev in seventh place, then Grachev and uh, Gleason, the scrap that we were watching earlier. And as I mentioned, Marcus Oestreich has done what he needed to do to get into the points. He's up now into 10th place. With uh, Kamini having taken that drive through in 11th and Bas Scouten down in 12th. So once again, can Kevin Gleason do anything about uh, Mikhail Grachev? He moves to the left line going up the hill, but of course, uh, as we were saying earlier, it's a right-hander at the Ostschleifer. An absolute commitment needed for this corner. Kevin Gleason has left me and just takes a look, but uh, Grachev just runs ever so slightly wide, but not wide enough for Gleason to uh, take advantage of that. The incident between Scouten and Schkuz is under investigation, car 20 and car 34. As we look down at uh, Andrea Beliki, looking at uh, Michel Nukia as uh, Lorenzo Valia dives up the inside of Jordi Genet but runs wide, has to go through the gravel. And a bump from Jordi Genet allowing both Morbidelli and Pepe Oriola to go past Oriola on the grass. And that, that, I was just about to say, that cone won't be doing any good for Sergei Avanasiev, but uh, it pops out. And smoke coming from the back of Jordi Genet's car as he goes up there the, from the front of Jordi Genet's car, front left, which was the, the problem corner, as we've been saying. And that would appear to be a puncture rubbing on the bodywork, or is it? Difficult to say from this angle, but you can see that there is body damage to the front of Janae's car as once again Grachev and Gleason locked in battle for eighth place. There is Avanasiev. Gleason, our race one winner. Let's have a look back at this incident then. Valia locks up, runs through the gavel, cuts the corner. Janae bumps him. And it's Avanasiev that's forced onto the grass. This is uh, what the view looked like from Morbidelli's car. Boom! Thank you very much, says Morbidelli. I'll, um, I'll take advantage of that fact. So Morbidelli up into fourth. So the situation reversed as Gleason takes another look at the inside of Grachev, but can't do anything about it. So in race one, Kamini finished second with uh, Morbidelli fifth. And uh, on this occasion, Morbidelli now fourth, and uh, Kamini out of the points, which I suspect will make Gianni Morbidelli a happy man. As we look at the race leader, still Michel Nukia started from second on the grid, took the lead going into the first corner, and is now holding off valiantly his teammate, Andrea Beliki, but centimetres between the pair. Ah. That looks to be the end of the challenge from Campos Racing as Marcus Oestreich 
pulls up. Ostrich had been in 10th place. Nukia then from Beliki as Jordi Janay rejoins, having had that uh, front left tyre replaced. So coming up to start lap 10, it's Nukia from Beliki, from Pepe Oriola in third place. There he is. Gianni Morbidelli in fourth. Sergei Avanasiev fifth. Lorenzo Velia sixth. Then it's Gleason and Grachev. Gleason having just got past Gla uh, Grachev, it would appear, away from our cameras. And this is where it happened, coming up the, the back of the straight and uh, exactly where Gleason had uh, attacked before. This time he makes it stick, gets past Grachev on the left-hand side. Grachev dropping back and uh, another re replay. That is Andrea Beliki, who'd been in second place and uh, threatening Michel Nukia. That's at the Nockstein at the western end of the track. And... Uh, that is uh, Baliki running very, very wide. Oh, don't know what happened there. There didn't seem to be any obvious reason for that. So Nukia then now has a, a sizable lead, but it's Gianni Morbidelli all over the back of Pepe Oriola's car as they go round the Ostschleifer. Morbidelli on the outside and... and not making contact, I don't think, with Pepe Oriola, but it was very close. Into the left-hander then, into the chicane. Oriola now in a... a threatened second place, but Michel Nukia, his lead, you see a yawning gap from Nukia back to Pepe Oriola. Morbidelli now attacking Oriola for second, and behind, Lorenzo Velia closing up on Sergei Avanasiev. Let's concentrate on this scrap for second place then between Pepe Oriola and Gianni Morbidelli. Through turn four into the bottom part of the Nockstein. No dramas this time as Morbidelli drops back ever so slightly. Pepe Oriola's dad, also called Pepe. You can sense the nerves there, can't you? 11 laps gone. 11 and a half, to be honest, as they, the flags there you see on the right-hand side are the from the paddock as Morbidelli takes a look at the left-hand side, closes to within a few centimetres of Pepe Oriola. They go round the left-hander, the sixth gear corner at the Ostschleifer, before dropping down from sixth into third for the Faralager curve. The rear right tyre lifts. Morbidelli all over the back of uh, Oriola's car, and they come into this left-right-left -left complex. There is Nukia, and a drive-through penalty for Lorenzo Velia. And that was for the incident in which he cut the chicane, I would suspect. So a drive-through penalty for Lorenzo Velia. Velia currently in fifth place. He will have been told by the team to come in as soon as possible. Sergei Avanasiev in fourth. That'll take some of the pressure off him, but it's Morbidelli still with Pepe Oriola in his sights. Can Avanasiev attack Morbidelli to help his teammate? And behind Velia is Beliki. There's Gleason. He'll move up into sixth as a result of that drive through. Anxious faces in the West Coast Racing Garage. What can Gianni Morbidelli... Indeed, there's confirmation for jumping the chicane. That's what the drive-through penalty was for, for Lorenzo Velia. As we look at this scrap for second, third and fourth, Oriola, Morbidelli and Avanasiev. And there is the battle. Oriola holding on so far. That particular Honda, an awful lot heavier than that particular Seat. Oriola carrying no success ballast. Morbidelli carrying 30 kilos. And the Honda also 35 kilos heavier because of the racing gearbox. So at the start then of... And uh, that was Valia going in 
to do his drive-through penalty. Oriola then from Morbidelli, from Avanasiev, second, third and fourth. Velia comes into the pits, so that will be Baliki, there he is in the background, now up to fifth, Gleason sixth. And Velia rejoins ahead of his teammate Grachev. That's how the gap has come down from eight tenths of a second to three tenths to nearly four tenths of a second over the last few laps. There is our race leader, Nukia, just exiting frame. But it's the battle for second place that we're concentrating on. Pepe Oriola looking back at uh, that man, Gianni Morbidelli, our series leader, thanks to that massive haul of points in Monza one week ago. And again, Morbidelli just takes a little look up the inside. Oriola, though, has the line. Now, what has happened to their tyres? We've only got a couple of laps to go. And those front left tyres are all important and how much punishment they've received during the race. Avanasiev fourth, Baliki fifth, Gleason in sixth. You see him at the back of shot there. Then Grachev, then Kamini, then Velia, who's dropped to ninth. Baskouten tenth. And that puncture has dropped, dropped Janay to 11th with uh, Marcus Oestreich, I would suspect, not playing any further part. The gap has opened up slightly between Pepe Oriola and Gianni Morbidelli, and it's Avanasiev now who's thinking about attacking, but also uh, defending from Beliki and Gleason both behind him. So away in the distance, our race leader, Michel Nukia. And the gap's starting to open out once again between Pepe Oriola, Gianni Morbidelli, Sergei Avanasiev, Andrea Beliki, and Kevin Gleason. This the penultimate lap. And has Pepe Oriola done enough? And into the pits comes Lorenzo Velia. He's clearly had enough. No chance of a good point scoring position for Lorenzo Velia, so his race looks to be over. As we will focus on this battle for second place for the final lap. There is Kevin Gleason, our race one winner, all over the back of Andrea Beliki. Can Gleason get past? That's the battle for fifth at the moment, as there we see Michel Nukia, Pepe Oriola, Gianni Morbidelli, Sergei Avanasiev. Looking down this start finish straight, Oriola just moves across. No changes in position, with Baliki just holding off Gleason for fifth. So, on the last lap then, four kilometers or so remain. Can Michel Nukia hang on? He's driven superbly, particularly that amazing start to get down to the chicane, ahead of uh, all the bumping and banging that was going on around him. Michel Nukia then having led virtually for the entire race. As we see the stricken Opel Astra of Marcus Oestreich. But the gaps between the drivers now opening up. Michel Nukia, Pepe Oriola, Gianni Morbidelli are one, two, three. Avanasiev possibly too far back. But uh, Kevin Gleason, will he have one last look at Andrea Beliki as they go through the final, uh, through the Ostschleifer and the Faralaga curve for the final time. And it would appear not. Michel Nukia starting to come under pressure from Pepe Oriola, but it's too little too late from Oriola as Michel Nukia rounds the final left-hander and takes the chequered flag for the second time this season. Pepe Oriola finishes second, Gianni Morbidelli third, Sergei Avanasiev fourth, Andrea Beliki fifth, Kevin Gleason in sixth place. Confirmation then, and all smiles at target competition. Yet another victory for them. So Michel Nukia on two wins, just like uh, Stefano Camini. Three wins, remember, for Gianni Morbidelli. But Michel Nukia will be very happy with that performance. Second on the grid to race victory. A very popular Danish driver will be very, very pleased, I suspect.
And then behind the top six, Grachev seventh, Comini eighth, Baskouten ninth, Jordi Genet tenth, and then uh, Valia and Ostreich failing to finish. And hopefully we can have a look at the points table very shortly to see what that win has done for Michel Nukia. And perhaps more importantly, the point scoring positions right at the head of the leaderboard with Morbidelli finishing on the podium in race two. But Stefano Camini finishing on the podium in race one, but then only getting eighth in race two. There is Gianni Morbidelli, who will have done his championship points position. No harm whatsoever here at the Salzburg ring. And you do have to wonder if the war of words will continue between the pair, although it's been said in the last week or so that uh, Stefano Camini either has run out of budget or is about to. And so he was wondering whether his continued participation in the TCR International Series was indeed still on. We shall have to wait and see. There are now three weeks until the next pair of races at Sochi in Russia. A flash of the lights. There indeed are the driver's points for you. Morbidelli still leads, but it's now 18 points the advantage between Morbidelli and Comini. Oriola and Janay, third and fourth. Beliki, fifth. Gleason, sixth. Nukia now has moved up to seventh place ahead of Avanasiev. Vaili in ninth, Grachev tenth. And then uh, Rene Munich and uh, Nikki Team, you see there, 11th and 12th. Uh, no longer in the series, although we may well see Rene Munich at some point later in the year, if the rumors are to be believed. Michel Nukia drives into winner's row in the pit lane having taken his second victory of the season. Let's get the reaction from him and from the target competition team. And you can see he's absolutely thrilled with that. Thank you, guys. Thanks for delivering such a good car. And thank you, Michelle, for driving so brilliantly. That will do nicely. And you can see just how pumped up he is. A rather more subdued Congratulations on the right-hand side of your screen there for Gianni Morbidelli for his third place. There is Gianni Morbidelli. And so both Morbidelli and Comini will be in the press conference, which will be widely reported, I suspect, online and on the various forums and magazines over the next uh, few days. So. You wonder what's uh, going to be said between the two. But uh, that's Michel Nukia, our race winner. Accepting the congratulations of uh, Gregor Pettersson. And there is Pepe Oriola with his dad. And again, a steady points haul. Both of the Kraft Bamboo Lukol drivers the, to the two Spaniards. What are you doing, Dad? You're embarrassing me on telly. Pepe Oriola and Jordi Genet steadily scoring the points. Just one race victory apiece, but uh, a tremendous points haul for them. Let's get confirmation then of the result of round 12 of the 2015 TCR International Series. Michel Nukia takes his second win of the year ahead of Pepe Ori uh, Oriola by less than half a second. Gianni Morbidelli finishes third ahead of uh, Sergei Avanasiev. Andrea Beliki, Kevin Gleason, Mikhail Grachev, Stefano Comini, Bas Scouten, and Jordi Genet takes the single point for finishing in 10th place. And our three non-finishers, Lorenzo Velia, Marcus Oestreich, and Igor Schguz. OK, let's head back down to the pit lane then. Let's talk to our race winner, Michel Nukia. He's with Fabio Ravaioli. Michel Nukia, great victory for you at the Salzburg Ring, uh, the second one for you in the season so far. Yeah, it's fantastic. Two victories in this season. Uh, I had a little bit of trouble here in the qualifying the session. But here, when I have a Biliki behind me, you know, I said, no, my teammate will, will not overtake me. So I push everything I can. And uh, sorry for him, there was oil on the track, but it's the same for me. I maybe saw it before him. So, yeah, that's the rules here in the racing. It was a great, uh, you, you, have a, a, you had a great pace. Uh, 
much better than uh, the rest of the field. Yeah, I think I, I win a lot over in the, the very fast corner because uh, here I said I have new tires on the car. I pushed to the limit, you know, to uh, have the maximum speed of, out of the car so I can maybe stay in the front. But of course, they said to me, let be, let be Ligi uh, go in front of me. But I could see he only win in slipstreaming. So I think, OK, wait one or two laps and see what happened. And he was gone in the oil. And so I said, OK, now I just go my own race and see I can make the distance to the other. And maybe I'll relax a little bit here in the end of the race. So yeah, it's a warm day here in Austria. Thank you very much. Congratulations. That explains the situation then with Andrea Beliki. So, so Michel Nukia, having seen the oil on the track down at the Nockstein, <laughs> as if we needed telling who he drives for. Uh, but uh, Nukia managed to avoid the oil. His teammate, not so fortunate. And so that then the reason for Andrea Beliki dropping down, finishing eventually in fifth place. And then confirmation also of our driver's points. 18 points, the advantage now that Gianni Morbidelli has over Stefano Camini. Four points behind Camini is Pepe Oriola, and a, a slight gap back then to Jordi Genet. Beliki and Gleason on the same number of points. And then it's uh, 30 points, 35 points back to Michel Nukia. But remember, 25 points for a victory, five points on offer for scoring uh, pole position in qualifying. And uh, we're just starting the second half of the season, so an awfully long way to go. And you look there at the second page of the leaderboard, most of those drivers having appeared at one stage or another. Franz Engschler will, I'm sure, reappear, as will René Munich, if the rumours are true. But for now, let's concentrate on the highlights from race two, round 12 of the TCR International Series here at the Salzburg Ring. That gives you an idea of the picturesque surroundings that the Salzburg ring sits in. When uh, the TV crew came here to look at uh, the track for the first time a couple of months ago, uh, the circuit covered in snow. Attention then shifts to the podium. Gianni Morbidelli finishes in third place. In second, Pepe Oriola. But it's Michel Nukia with a big smile on his face. The big man from Denmark wins his second race of the season. And so the national anthems. time we heard the Danish national anthem was in Portimao three weeks ago when two Danish drivers were successful. Nikki Team in race one in the Audi TT and Michel Nukia in race two. The presentation then of the trophies, you'll notice slightly different trophies to race one.
Alexander Reiner, the president of the Salzburg Ring, making the presentations today. And the biggest cheer for Michel Nukier from Target Competition. And you can see just how much that means to him. The Salzburg Ring, a very special place for Michel. And congratulations to, to Target Competition for the team's trophy. And so this, I suspect, is where it's going to get messy. After race one, it was all very neat and tidy and uh, the knowledge that there was another race to come as the ladies who've handed out the champagne make a swift tactical retreat. This time it's the battle of the champagne bottles. Pepe Oriola very sensibly getting out of the way. Gianni Morbidelli and Michel Nukia very sportingly clinking bottles of champagne and allowing themselves a drop before traditionally passing the bottles down to their team so that their engineers and mechanics can have a drink and share in their success. <laughs> Michel Nukia having to duck down one of the tallest drivers in the field, Michel Nukia alongside one of the shortest, Gianni Morbidelli. Let's take one last look at the results from round 12 then here at the Salzburg ring. Michel Nukia, victory is his. Pepe Oriola finishes second ahead of Gianni Morbidelli. And then it's Sergei Avanasiev, Andrea Beliki, Kevin Gleason, Mikhail Grachev, Stefano Comini, Bas Scouten from the Netherlands, and Jordi Genet rounding off the top 10. And there are our three non-finishers, Lorenzo Velia, Marcus Oestreich, and Igor Schguz not finishing. And uh, you have to say, a particular blow to the Campos racing team who tried so hard to get the Opel Astra to the finish. How are you doing? <laughs> Pepe Oriole, always pleased to play the Joker. As we look at the driver's points one last time, Gianni Morbidelli on 175 points, an 18-point lead over Stefano Camini. Pepe Oriola closes to within four points of Camini. Then it's Jordi Genet, Andrea Belicki, Kevin Gleason, Michel Nukia in seventh place, Sergei Avanasiev, Lorenzo Velia, and Mikhail Grachev. That then was the Salzburg ring in Austria. We have a slight break of three weeks before the next rounds at Sochi in Russia. We'll see you then. Bye-bye.